This is DME Prep Zone Wrap Up. I'm James Phillips, joined by Brett Elmore. Uh, sorry I missed you guys last week and had to have Jonathan Bentley here with you, Brett. That was, uh, I'm sure that was interesting. That was fun. I enjoyed Bentley and, and we had a good time. Actually, a better time than normally I have here with you. Well, okay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm kidding. Well, well next week, Bentley might be back. <laughs> no, 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 I'm that? just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Everything's good. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you survived uh, vacation, but we're back. I survived Gatlinburg. Okay. And the Alabama game yesterday. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, that, was had... a, that was a good one to survive there. That's right. I hope you had plenty of popcorn. I did. I had plenty. I meant to bring some popcorn with me yeah, today, but I go. didn't. Uh, okay, let's go over the games from this week. Addison and Cold Springs. Addison 37, Cold Springs 13. Um, Addison... They kind of were slow getting out of the gate in this one, but ended up beating uh, Cold Springs pretty handedly. Uh, might be a little rust on Addison. I don't know. Uh, Mather, 10 carries, 103 yards, three touchdowns. But Addison, finally, they're back to their winning ways and uh, trying to head toward the playoffs. That's right. How about uh, this one was a surprise. Barry, 59, Lynn, 18. Now, I'm not surprised that Barry won, but I'm surprised they won by that margin. Yeah, that surprises me a little bit. I thought uh, it would be a, a closer game than this. Tittle, 18 of 35, passing 179 yards and a touchdown. Michael Darty, by the way, eight catches, 57 yards and a touchdown. But still, uh, this was uh, – I didn't expect this at all. Uh, but I'm with you. I, I thought Barry may win this ball game, but not by this margin. Right. I really thought that would have been a really close game. Yeah. All right. Uh, another one was kind of a surprise and it's, uh, for the good guys – Meek 34, Marion County 14. Uh, what a game by Meek. Meek is one of those hot teams. You're going to have to watch them throughout the rest of the season. They're on a collision course with a, probably another of one of our better teams in the area, Summit Christian, at the end of the year. Uh, that'll be a great ball game. But uh, Ethan Grace, uh, 80 yards, 15 carries, and a touchdown in the ball game. Cam Deaver, 9 carries, 54 yards, and a touchdown, including an 11-yard catch. But um, Meek is one of those teams, um, it's surprising, one of the stronger teams that we're talking about this year right. in our area. Right. Well, and that's uh, what I was thinking about uh, over the weekend is that Meek and Summerton Christian have both had major turnarounds over right. the last couple of years. You know, normally we're talking Jasper. We're normally talking uh, Dora. We're talking, you know, Oakman. But this year, it's it's the year of uh, the smaller teams, right. somebody Christian and me. Well, and you know who that might be good news for? It's Curry. Curry, yeah. Curry loses to uh, Oak Grove 50-16. to 16. But, like we talked about something Christian and me, Curry's in that position where maybe they've got the right coach in place now. And in a year or so, we'll be talking about them maybe making the playoffs and having a better record. Rebuilding process, as, as always. But Wyatt Cook, we've, we've mentioned this before, Wyatt Cook scoring a rushing touchdown. Blake Sargent, 38-yard fumble return for a touchdown. Uh, Curry's in the rebuilding stage. Kudos to the kids. They keep fighting. You can't, you, you've you got to give them that. But right. I was hoping this would be one that they would win. Yeah, I was hoping for that too. Um, let's go to another uh, really close game. J.B. Pennington, 43, Carbon Hill, 42. And that's a, that's a tough loss for Carbon Hill. They really played well in this game. Yeah, they did, and it surprised me. It surprised me that it was this close that actually Carbon Hill probably should have won the ball game. Carbon Hill, uh, they're one and two in their last three games. They have lost those uh, two games by a combined three points. That's how close they are. And, of course, 43-42 uh, to Pennington and 30-28 to to Vinemont. They are so close they just don't have that luck. This upcoming matchup with Oakman, though, uh, going to be very interesting. It should be. Uh, speaking of Oakman, 32-14, to 14, the Wildcats beat Susan Moore, and that's another one in that region. And uh, Susan Moore is one of, the, one of the better teams in that region. So Oakman now firmly in control of being the number two team in that, in that region heading into the playoffs. All, all they have to do is win. Just keep winning, and they're going to host a playoff game. Bubba Odom, three touchdown passes. Caden Marchbanks, two touchdown runs. Uh, Oakman, they are probably in the best position of any team in this area as far as the playoff picture is concerned. That's right. Uh, a team that's finally got their offense going is Dora. Dora 32, Fultondale 0. Dora's defense has, has played well throughout the season, but the offense has struggled. And the last two games, we've seen them show up now. Absolutely. Uh, Jamarcus Goodman, 15 carries, 105 yards, two touchdowns. The defense, you were talking about them, their second shutout of the season, 
And in Class 4A, their defense is eighth in the state. They're only giving up 13.7 points a game. Right. This Dora defense is really, really good. They held Fulton Delta 41 total yards and negative 32 on the ground. Right. They forced three turnovers, returned an interception for a touchdown, and recorded a safety. You can't get any better. No, than that. you can't get any better than that. That is, that is some strong defense, and then yeah. to see the offense put up 32 points. Yeah, what a game for Dora, and they're they're starting to click right at the right time. It's kind of the opposite of what happened last year. Yeah, uh, where they kind of went down. COVID hurt them. Uh, they're they're really starting to roll right here, heading towards the playoffs. But uh, remain remainder of the schedule on the road, right? Right. Yeah. yeah Four tough. straight games on the road, That's so tough. it will be tough to end it. Um, how about minor 54, Jasper 44? You were at this game. Uh, tell us a little bit about it. I know Jasper, was, it was back and forth to begin with, and minor jumped up. Jasper tries to make a comeback. Minor with a big second quarter of action. Um, uh, this, this was almost the highest scoring game in Jasper slash Walker history. Uh, but combined points, you know, they were a touchdown short. Points galore. If you liked offense, game for you. If you <laughs> like defense, you didn't like this ball game. Spencer Rosenfeld again, 295 all-purpose yards, three total touchdowns. He threw for 173 yards, 12 of 28 passing, running for 65 yards on nine carries, a couple of touchdowns, uh, and catching another Pass right, for a touchdown. Yeah, yeah, again, caught another one. 57 yarder. Uh, Trayvon Stewart had a big game, too. I feel like they need to give Trayvon the ball more. 10 carries, 69 yards, and a touchdown. Corey Shepard, very talented receiver. Right. Three catches, 83 yards. And the defense, Landon Castillo, had a pretty good night. He recorded 10 tackles, but uh, like I say, um, I don't know, and I said this on the broadcast Friday night. I don't know how Miner came in 0-5. I don't either. That, that team has some athletes, and they were up and down the field the whole night. So, I, you know, it's not going to get any easier for Jasper having to go to Jackson Olin. You're talking about a top-10 team. You're talking about the eighth-best offense in the state. Uh, they're averaging right at 37 points a game. The path to the playoffs pretty much eliminated for Jasper because it, uh, they're going to have to win out, and they probably still need help. Right. They, I think they will, and, and it's just going to be – a uh, it's tough when you've still got Jackson Olin and Pinson Valley on the schedule. Yeah, you still have two of the big boys left, and it, it's going to be tough. It's a tough road for Jasper. Your story starts at Bevel State Community College. Whether you are just starting out or starting over, Bevel State has an opportunity that is right for you. With five locations serving seven counties, you don't have to go far to start your own success story. Plus, with tuition lower than four-year colleges, you won't need to spend more for a great education. Visit us online at bscc.edu to learn about your options for seamless academic transfer and high demand career tech and health science offerings. Let us help you tell your story. Okay, the game of the week this week was Cordova traveling to Winona. First half was an incredible first half. Uh, Cordova goes in leading um, 21 to 20, but then second half, it's like two different teams showed up. You know, Cordova just couldn't get the ball moving on offense. Defense gave up some big plays, and Winona really, uh, really wore down the Blue Devils in the second half. Well, Cordova's uh, Hedrick, 276 yards passing, three touchdowns and an interception. Armstead had 156 receiving yards and a couple of scores, but like you mentioned, I was keeping up with the score a little bit throughout the, the Viking broadcast, and uh, I saw where Cordova was up at one point, and I thought, oh, they're going to get this win. But then I checked after the game, and, right. and I said, Cordova lost? Everything shifted. Uh, and, you know, maybe they can get the win coming up uh, this Friday night. They got uh, a winless Carver team coming into town. Right. Did you know that if they can win this game, the next victory for Cordova will be the 600th in program history. Wow, I didn't realize that. A big milestone for Cordova. And it's, uh, Cordova, you know, moving up to 5A last year, they've not been able to get a region win yet in 5A. And it, it's just they're one of the smallest schools in 5A, and they're just they're overmatched at this point. Overmatched, and it's sad. It's sad that the association would put a team like Cordova with so much tradition, uh, number one in 5A and number two in this region. They just, it's not a fit. Right. It's not, it, this is totally unfair for Cordova. Right, definitely is. Um, it's, it's a lot like 
Jasper ended up in the region that they're in. Yeah, I mean, Jasper has, you know, over the years, they've been a 6A school, you know, but the region that they're in? Right. Let's put, let's go ahead and put Jasper in 6A, and then let's go ahead and put them in the toughest region in the state. Right. That's, you know. Instead of putting them in the region with Coleman or yeah. in that Tuscaloosa region. Right, in the Tuscaloosa region would have been nice, but no, they have to put us in the city and, 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 and give us that. Right. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> well, Brett, we always want to thank our sponsors, uh, Bevel State Community College. That's where uh, people in our area, their future start at Bevel State Community College. Uh, go to bscc.edu and check out everything that Bevel State has to offer. And then our other uh, sponsor for Prep Zone this year is Kilgore Green Funeral Home. Dale Green and the friendly staff at Kilgore Green Funeral Home. 1200 Birmingham Avenue in Jasper, telephone 3849503 for Kilgore Green Funeral Home. I always joke with Dale, I say that uh, business may be about the dead, but it's always booming. That's, that, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not even going to touch that one right there. Not even going to touch it. Uh, well, Brett, thanks for joining me as always. Uh, we want to do a special unveiling, though, of what our game of the week is going to be this week. Yeah, absolutely. Oakman at Carbon Hill. Hey, I like this matchup. People think I'm crazy, but Carbon Hill's been close. They have. And a county rival, Oakman. What gets me is the offenses in this ball game. Oakman averaging 31.8 a game. Carbon Hill 33.7 a game. A little better offensive output. Now, Carbon Hill, uh, they have uh, not beaten. Oakman since 1995, and Oakman has that seven-game winning streak against Carbon Hill, but something's telling me this is going to be a great ball game. You know, I think it will. A lot of times you can, you know, we say it all the time, throw the records out the window with a yeah. rivalry, and that what that's what seems to happen, especially with Oakman against teams like Carbon Hill and Cordova. Mm -hmm. and I think what we're going to see here is going to be a, a two different styles. Oakman's going to come in. They're going to look to throw the ball more. Carbon Hill keeps it on the ground, and they yeah. grind it out and grind it out. Um, but I do. I'm, I'm with you. I think it will end up being a very good football game uh, and can't wait to go to Carbon Hill for the first time this year. Yep. Uh, it uh, should be a great ball game. Defense, though, Oakman just a little bit better. That's right. Well, for Brad Elmore, I'm James Phillips. We'll see you next week.